I'm going to talk about today the best product you can have for keeping the bugs off of your garden plants. It's called ProtectNet Insect Barrier Fabric. It's the, it's the premium stuff. There's also some generic brands. I actually ordered some that's coming in the mail from AG Fabric. But the ProtectNet has the, the highest ratings for what it can block. And you can see over here I got some peppers underneath of it. It's pretty sheer. I don't know if you can see in the video the weave of it. It's, it's not just a square mesh, it's actually a weave that loops around in some pattern that really closes off any gaps. And you can see, not only does it keep the bugs out, it keeps all the little bits of leaves, sticks, bird poop, centipedes, uh, weed seeds. So yeah, so it really does a good job. It's pretty durable. It's like thick pantyhose because it's made of nylon. It's UV resistant, so it won't break down out here in the sun. It's kind of springy. You see when you pull it over, it kind of stays uh, taut and stretched out. And I have these, or this section over eight foot hoops because um, I had cut them down to use my 10 foot wide frost cover. <clears throat> That'd give me, you know, some length on each side. But since this stuff, I bought it in a roll that's 14 feet wide, I've been able to use a full 10 foot length of uh, PVC three-quarter PVC and you can see I can make the hoops really tall that way yeah, under here are tomatoes and, to and full-size tomato cages and yeah still plenty of room even when you're using uh, the lower hoops you always want to make sure that the cage still is behind the hoop because you don't want the stuff catching the, the ends of your cages or anything metal because although it's pretty durable, you can still tear it up. You can actually see where I was dragging the hose around and where the junction of two hoses met. The metal cuff caught this and, and tore it. But I've bought some uh, Gorilla all-weather outdoor repair tape. It's supposed to be good for nylon and, and repairing tents and things of that nature. So that should be good for you know covering those holes up any little minor holes isn't gonna be a, a big make a big difference and surprisingly even though I haven't taken this fabric off I already have some of these pepper plants with peppers growing on them so you do get some pollination from minor pollinators like ants and any bugs that you initially trap when you put the fabric up. Like, uh, like I think I've seen in here a lot of stingless wasp varieties. Um, I haven't seen any stink bugs or anything like cucumber beetles that I've accidentally trapped yet. But this first row of lettuce and cabbage I put in, yeah, I didn't get the covers on there when I put it in and I waited about three weeks and I got cabbage loopers on it and you can see the fabric traps in the cabbage looper moths that hatch and I have to come out here every day and let them out so they don't uh, cause any more problems and of course I'm using that dye pill to spray them too and that'll eventually eventually get rid of them yeah, you can see here here's a that looks like probably a stingless wasp species right there. Yeah. They don't, they aren't as good of pollinators as the bees, but they, they can do it. What I'm going to do though, yeah, is uh, come out here once a week on a nice sunny day, take all the covers off and let the bees come in and pollinate it for most of the day. 
and then put the covers back on it. And most likely what's going to happen is if there's any cucumber beetles or stink bugs and things of that like that are inside the cover, they're going to want to get out because once the sun comes out in the middle of the day, towards later the day and, and heats things up, because you know I got black, black fabric out here and it gets pretty hot, they, uh, all the bugs will start collecting to the top like these guys. You can see them all up here just trying to get out. And then you can you can hit them with some isopropyl alcohol and kill them or just let them out to, to go feast on their natural plants that are not your garden vegetables. You know, go, look, go let them out on somebody else's poor garden. But yeah, if I, if I had gotten my cabbage and lettuce covered as soon as I planted it, I wouldn't have had this problem. I've got my carrots under this protect net as well because the bunnies were starting to eat them. That's another thing that it'll block is deer damage, rabbit damage, or just any critters getting in there. Of course, if you're growing something that doesn't require pollination, then you can just leave the fabric on the entire grow season. You know, great for broccoli, lettuce, cabbage, all things like that. And really, for things like that, you don't even have to have the hoops. You can just lay the fabric right over it. And then you either use uh, sandbags, or what I'm actually using is a few bricks and a sandbag. That way the bricks don't uh, catch the fabric with the edge and tear it up. They actually re recommend you to, uh, if you have a garden without landscape fabric, just to go ahead and bury one side of it in dirt. That'll secure it from the wind blowing it. Really, the wind doesn't catch this stuff nearly as bad as like frost cover, just because it's so sheer. A lot more, uh, a lot more wind passes through it. That's also too why it doesn't heat up so bad. It probably raises, uh, probably raises your temperature up a degree, but also too because it's white, it's reflecting just a tiny bit of sunlight. So even though I got these black rows out here, it probably actually lowers the temperature inside just a bit, which is probably a good thing because it gets hot out here. Yeah, so whether you put it on over hoops or just over uh, your plants directly, make sure it's secure because um, it's still you don't want any animal, animals getting underneath of it too. You want to keep it flush to the ground. Yeah, and uh, so my AG fabric should be here in probably a week. And we'll check that out when it gets here. Hello everyone. Well today I'm controlling another pest that I've been experiencing problems with. And this time it is the cabbage looper moths. And of course they get on cabbage. And the solution for that is to use this organic product called Dipel. And this specific kind is Dipel Pro DF. I think it stands for dry flow but you can see it's like a like a dry granular kind of flower inside has a, a yeasty smell to it probably because it's made with some yeast in there but what it does is that it gives home to a bunch of bacteria called bacillus thuringiensis thuringiensis which uh Specifically, this is the subspecies of that called Kurstaki. Now, there's also other uh, other Bacillus thuringiensis. Thuringen it's a hard word to say. There's other products like that with uh, different substrains. I think uh, Israeli is one of them. But uh, this seems to work just fine for uh, the application I'm going to use it for. And so, all you need is a sprayer. This one's a two gallon one, although it says Roundup, it's never had Roundup or anything like that in it. Just make sure you use, always use a sprayer that's clean. And I mix one quarter cup per gallon, which is the, the max rate. You can mix it up. You can actually mix it lower than that, but you know, if you're not having to thin it out for like large fields of stuff, 
you know, might as well use the, the maximum strength. So let me show you what these little, uh, little buggers look like. Here's the kind of damage that the loopers do. You can see the leaves have chew marks in them. And the loopers are a little, little caterpillar. And also too, you can see the, all that little blobby stuff is their poop, looper poop. That's always a sure sign that you got them. Now, of course I should have done something about this two weeks ago. And actually, I should have had my insect barrier up as soon as I planted all this, but I had so much to do, I just, uh, I got distracted and never got around to it, but really it's a, it's a must if I'm going to do it, got to do it right. And because I got the barrier up, the uh, insect barrier up, at some point, it's not totally bad because if I had no insect barrier and had not treated it, I would have had uh, probably damage all the way down to the stems. And I've already cut one of these green cabbages out and it seemed fine. Just pull off the uh, bad leaves, much like the lettuce. And of course, you know, probably some of this too is uh, slug damage as well. And notice that my green cabbage is coming, coming along way faster than my purple cabbage, which is more of a late season. So, any of them that I've seen on the leaves, well, I've just done, done spraying here, you can see I threw them into a pile and they're already, already trying to make their way back. They look like a little, little green caterpillar. You can just pick them off and then, uh, you know, this is what you do. <laughs> but I've sprayed thoroughly going up one side getting in all the cracks and crevices of the leaves go all the way up make sure though to uh, to shake up your sprayer bottle every uh, minute or so because that dye pell will start to settle back out in the bottom of it and then when you get done spraying on one side make sure that you go down the other side of your row and hit it all from a different angle that way too you you also see more worms that you've missed like uh, like this one I just missed you can see them up there yeah they're pretty easy to see and it's the middle of the day so they're out and about but what this uh, what the BT is going to do is kill off all these eggs see those eggs let's see if I can do this a little bit better that little yellow group. Those are their eggs. Yeah, the, the bacteria will get in there and kill it off. That'll cut the life cycle off. And of course, you'll still get damage as long as the looper's on there, so you gotta make sure to come back when it's humid out and uh, manually pick them and squish them. But yeah, if you get your insect barrier up, Right at the start, probably won't even experience this problem.